Hi, Marcus. Great to meet up with you at the range and begin working on your swing the other evening. Uh, just a quick recap on the key point that we covered during your lesson. Obviously, you've played a lot of golf before. You've had a few lessons and you've been trying to do certain things. But as we discussed on the evening, there were quite a few contradictions there in the way you've been coached in the past. You've been told to keep your head still. But you've also been told to keep the flex in the right knee and maintain your spine angle. So we take a little look at what that gives us. That's going to give us a position at the top that's very short and quite weak. You can see there that you're doing a really good job of maintaining the flex in the right knee. And the forward bend that you had at address has been maintained. Unfortunately, that means that the axis of the golf swing, if you will, the sternum, moves off the golf ball during the backswing. And that makes it really easy to hit the ground behind the ball and also swing to the left. If you swing to the left, you're going to impart left to right spin on the golf ball. So you can see what we've got. We've got a translation of the axis to the right and the head moves down during the backswing, down and to the right. So what we then discussed is what you need to do to, first of all, generate a little bit more power. The butt of the golf club here, the butt end of the golf club, doesn't travel far enough. And added to that, the head is dipping down a little bit. And we discussed the three things that all good backswings can uh, contain, which is a turn, an extension or an elongation of the spine, a standing up piece, and a tilt to the left. Now, the tilt to the left is actually down towards the golf ball once you've turned through 90 degrees. Hopefully, you've got your head around that uh, towards the end of your session, judging by the swing you made. Uh, I'm pretty sure you did. So, the analogy that we used was an axe man, and if you were trying to chop a piece of wood with an axe and you stayed bent forward, the butt of the golf club wouldn't travel very far. And as a result, you'd be able to hit that block of wood, but you wouldn't be able to generate a lot of power. If you try to turn from that flex forward position, you would also translate off the golf ball as I showed you uh, during your session. So if we want to generate more power, what we need to do, and we need to get that butt of the club to travel further in the backswing. So we need to elongate the spine, and that will be a much more powerful move. You can see there I've got rid of the flex in the knees, the flex in the pelvis, and the flex in the spine. From there I can chop down on that wood and generate a lot more speed and a lot more power at impact. So the feeling is that you're going to elongate the spine during the backswing. And we use the, the other analogy we used was the Frosbury flop. Because when you're going to do the high jump, you can see the, the, the thoracic area is extended, the pelvis area, the pelvic area is extended, and the trail leg would have straightened also. So this is you towards the end of your session and what we're trying to do here is a combination of the Axeman and the Frosbury flop. As you go back now, the butt of the club travels substantially further. There's a definite standing up. You can see that you've gained a little bit of height, but notice so you've stayed much more centred, which means the low point of the golf club is going to be at the golf ball and consequently you can hit out at it. But look how much further the left arm and the butt of the club have travelled during that backswing. That's a massive, massive power accumulator uh, that you can get rid of on the way down, generate a lot of force, but also improve your overall accuracy uh, in regards to where the golf ball's going. So massive improvement, keep elongating the spine, keep extending, and I look forward to working with you again in a few weeks' time. Well done.